somewhat based on the life of a notorious federal prison inmate, Birdman of Alcatraz features Burt Lancaster in the title role. The release of the film in 1962 made a household name of the two-time convicted murderer Robert Franklin Stroud. The film is, however, an affectionate look at Stroud, who educated himself in the science of birds during his 53-plus years in prison. And he became, at that time, one of the authorities in that field. Stroud initially gained widespread attention and notoriety from the release of the American writer Thomas Gaddis's book about his life in 1955. Burt Lancaster and his production partner, Harold Heck, both read Gaddis's book and thought the story would make a really great movie. So they purchased the screen rights with the idea that Lancaster would portray Stroud. The film was adapted for the screen by Guy Trosper. He's also remembered for his work on the films The Pride of St. Louis, Jailhouse Rock, and One-Eyed Jacks. Stroud was initially imprisoned as a young man for committing a murder in Juneau, Alaska. He's a rebellious inmate who constantly fights against the rules-oriented prison system. When he's on his way to jail by train, he breaks open a window to allow his fellow suffocating inmates the opportunity to breathe fresh air. This impulsive action and his rebellious attitude put him immediately at odds with the warden, Harvey Shoemaker, of the Leavenworth Prison in Kansas. While he's incarcerated, he learns that his mother tried to visit him, but was denied, and she was told to return the next week. Enraged, he calmly approaches a guard about the matter, and he stabs the man fatally. His loving mother, though, initiates and successfully runs a campaign that leads to a reduction of his sentence to life in prison. However, the terms of his reduced sentence require that he be kept in solitary confinement for the rest of his natural life. While walking in the exercise yard during a severe thunderstorm, he finds an orphaned baby sparrow that has fallen out of his nest. He rescues it and adopts the bird. He quickly begins a trend where he and other convicts acquire birds, especially canaries it seems. He then begins building cages and soon accumulates a collection of birds. The chirping and singing of the birds in his cell block is soon replaced with an eerie silence. He then discovers that the birds have fallen ill. He begins himself to conduct countless experiments and finally comes up with a cure for the birds. Over the years, he becomes an expert on birds, their diseases, and the cures they need. He even writes and publishes a 500-page book on the subject. Stroud is visited by fellow bird lover Stella Johnson. They agree to go into a business venture together marketing his bird remedies. He and Stella end up getting married. In doing so, his mother becomes jealous of her, and this causes a permanent rift between the mother and the son. He then is abruptly transferred to the federal penitentiary at Alcatraz, and there he's not allowed to keep birds. He readjusts his attention and ends up writing a history of the U.S. penal system. This incriminating information in the book is suppressed by Shoemaker, who's now the warden at the Rock. Though he's still at odds with the authority, he manages to help end a prison rebellion in 1946, and he does this by confiscating and throwing out two firearms that had been acquired by the convicts. Although constantly denied parole, he is eventually transferred to another prison in Missouri. During the move, he meets several reporters and Thomas Gaddis, the eventual writer of the book about his life. Birdman of Alcatraz was to have been the American film debut of British director Charles Crichton. 
He's best remembered for his screenplay and directing the movie A Fish Called Wanda in 1988. An undisclosed clash with Lancaster led to this abrupt firing, and he was then replaced with John Frankenheimer. The first cut of the movie was four and a half hours long. The film was configured in such a way that nothing could be cut from it, and there still be continuity in the story. So the film would have to be rewritten and partially reshot. Lancaster was committed to a role in Judgment at Nuremberg. The year that he was away was spent rewriting portions of the screenplay and preparing for reshoots of the film. During the reshooting, a difference of opinion arose between Lancaster and Frankenheimer about a camera placement. Lancaster once physically picked the director up and carried him across the room, placing him down really decisively and stating, that's where the camera needs to go. Despite this occurrence, the two would again work together in two other films. The Federal Bureau of Prisons was not very pleased with the idea of filming a story about the life of Robert Stroud, and therefore they offered no cooperation at all in the movie. So the Leavenworth and Alcatraz prisons were both constructed on the studio backlots. The real Alcatraz is only seen from the exterior views from the boat or from the shore dockside. During the early 1960s, Burt Lancaster starred in four United Artists films at the reduced price of $150,000 each. One of those films was this movie. His normal fee was $750,000, but because of cost overruns that he had through his own production company, he decided to square things with the studio in this manner. Now, it's said that Lancaster was super immersed into this film and that he was really into the role that he was playing, so much so that he wept at certain points during his portrayal. The film is just loaded with a supporting cast, and each of their performances are superb. Carl Malden plays Warden Harvey Shoemaker, and this character is actually a composite of multiple wardens who Robert Stroud dealt with during his years of incarceration. Thelma Ritter's portrayal of his mother, Elizabeth, is magnificent. At one point, she stands by her son, even petitioning President Woodrow Wilson to commute his death sentence. But she then severs ties with him when he marries the business partner, played by Betty Fields. In one of the most applauded performances, Telly Savalas plays Gomez, and he's a half-witted but warm-hearted fellow prisoner who gets all caught up in Stroud's fondness for birds. He even acquires and cares for a few of them on his own. Now, Telly Savalas is an interesting character, and we're going to be doing a video on his life, and you don't want to miss that. I mean, this guy has one of the most interesting Hollywood lives that I've ever covered. You'll love it, so really look for the Telly Savalas video that's going to be coming up pretty soon. It probably will have his familiar role as Kojak in the title. Neville Brand's touching performance as Bull is really admirable. He plays a cranky guard who over the years gradually forms a respect for Stroud, Burt Lancaster, Thelma Ritter, and Telly Savalas. All three of those actors were nominated for an Academy Award for their performances. Just before the film opened in 1962, Burt Lancaster made an appearance on The Ed Sullivan Show. He spoke of the film and about the real character of Robert Stroud. This appearance and the movie's release prompted an outpouring of letters demanding Stroud's release. Burt Lancaster came to admire his accomplishments as a bird expert, to the point that he should be actually pardoned. It's said that Lancaster even campaigned for his release. 
But the fact that the real Robert Stroud was nothing like he was portrayed in the film ensured that this release would never happen. The former Alcatraz inmate, Glenn Williams, said that he was not a sweetheart. He was a vicious killer. And he thought that Burt Lancaster owed the public an apology. Another inmate described him as a real jerk a guy that liked chaos and turmoil. Frank Heaney was a former prison guard at Alcatraz from 1948 to 1951, and he says that Stroud was anything but the sympathetic character that's portrayed by Burt Lancaster. He says that he was an extremely difficult and demented inmate, who, though he was highly intelligent, was a vicious killer and a violent psychopath. Due to the popularity of this movie, the real inmate became one of the most popular inmates of Alcatraz, second only to Al Capone. At the time the film was made, in 1962, he was still a prisoner and would remain one until his death the following year. He had been incarcerated for the last 54 years of his life, with 42 of those years being spent in solitary confinement, and he was never allowed to see the film about his life. With the passing of time, stories seemed to change. Historical characters often appear kinder and more likable than they were in real life. Such seems to be the case with Robert Stroud. And this is all thanks to Burt Lancaster. With its Oscar-worthy performances, outstanding cinematography, and the intriguing storyline of the movie, it's no wonder that Birdman of Alcatraz is often recognized as one of the best prison films ever made. And it's well worth a watch, or even a rewatch. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll continue to chase the classics.